So the, the, the talk is uh, basically about the kind of environment that probably you are fully aware of some of the flavors in that. This is one of the flavors I use personally for my uh, working with, with students and uh, also for, for my for some projects. And this is full visual. Today I'm going to uh, also discuss as before about several dozens, thousands of CPUs to drive my calculation in some models. Uh, here I'm going to come rather than infrastructure, how this is going to run another than show you on how to deploy so huge models on any infrastructure to so this is not very good. But I think that one of the aspects of the previous talk was that you know sometimes it makes sense to to use the environment wide share and just not to have it uh, just aligned for one particular project because this is the life cycle. Right? So you can just also think through that that if you need any environment, clearly you know, for the, the models like the, 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 the ones that are going to cover to give the following talks, probably just a tiny infrastructure is required. But the problem I'm showing you is that so we need a, just not only those of CPUs to, to just prepare any kind of inference, but also huge uh, data chunks. So. And uh, the, most, the more we need to use the data, the better. And uh, this framework I'm going to cover here this is called Ambient Cloud. Uh, it offers many of tools just also for a group effort. So this is not like that I'm going to fascinate you by some particular example, rather to show you a kind of framework. Here I'm going to also refer somehow, maybe implicitly to, to time series, uh, but definitely this is not the main focus. I'm going to cover you in this talk. So, um, this is, um, I'd like also to, to show you the difference compared to, to other hyperscalers, how it's organized in different um, by, by different businesses and how it's organized by the end itself. I think that from the scientific point of view, uh, it, it's fully transparent that if you use one infrastructure, probably if your application is uh, or your model is well uh, written, you can just move it uh, to, to many directions. Yeah? And so it means that there is no any kind of you know, dead end, like, you know, uh, if you come across some kind of bottlenecks when deploying the model still you can choose, you can take your own uh, cloud or uh, to get, go to any other cloud instead. Uh, there are some uh, things that uh, are relevant to the model. First of all, as I said before, the transparency, the, the, the control of the data, and I'm going to conclude the talk with some examples of uh, something that um, became super um, popular during the last year. I mean, the generative AI. So those things that have something uh, to do with time series, but just only to the central uh, certain extent. So uh, what I'd like to, to show you here that if you go to the to this space, you can just allocate, you can just define many entities. Yeah? And this is, of course, you know, like, you know, computing nodes, um, also data uh, source, but what is really quite important is from you know, technical perspective, this is a very good platform also for, for developers because you know you can also create some services that uh, are going to be used also by by the members of your team or just reused in any other products. So uh, by the way, uh, if you wish, then clearly I can be my colleague of mine with regard to the process from my as well. So if you wish, we can just enable you on how to use that. We can point you to the right click. It's really important just to make a quick enablement because anyhow, I mean, also the uh, some topics that Professor Nisbet has referred to, like you know, quantum computing, uh, some infrastructure is uh, accessible also, also through this um, system. Yeah. So that, that's why the um, and quite, uh, I think, feasible to use. Mm. As I told before, I mean, time series is part of the 
some application like that that is quite common and uh, we need um, a basis for the, not just only for this, but for any kind of uh, modeling that takes any advantage of forecasting predicting future based on history. So uh, as seen this way, this is part of you know, modern uh, machine learning uh, or data science actually uh, um, discipline. And uh, this is a kind of alternative. It's not basically uh, one of the methods to, to approach model is to understand dynamics, which is behind the scenes, a kind of process, dynamics, and uh, later on, you know, to through uh, how to figure out the solutions, how to model the lower process of that. And that is the to kind of on the other end, and to try to predict anything, but without understanding the, uh, the dynamics. Uh, not only because it is uh, so complex, but well, also because we have no clue how to get the information about the, the dynamic itself. So that's quite different from any kind of um, any you know, topology that we have, it's a part of the cover or something that uh, has been for years a kind of underpinning uh, basis for, for any food that you want to yours um, uh, efforts. Anyhow, this in, in um, education words, as I said before, might be seen also from the other angle. So what I'd like to show you here that regardless of many services that are covered by hyperscalers, you always want to see whether you have a kind of a infrastructure that is well defined and just align just to use it uh, for a certain period of time. The problem is uh, always with huge monolithic environments. So that's why this is the, the duty of, of, of the cloud that uh, many models of, of data, many models of data processing, processing have uh, came just only, have, you know, became apparent just only to um, split it. I mean, not to use huge monolithic environments because it's cheaper to have it divided into smaller nodes and process this way. Anyhow, you could also divide the service you need uh, based on those uh, systems. And particularly, which is super interesting, uh, not only because of the big uh, problems data mining, uh, in the sense that uh, you are so popular uh, during the last three, four years. Uh, GPU units. Uh, you can use them, you can share them uh, across teams. Uh, that's very comfortable because uh, you just don't burn out your money. You, you, you just pay just only for that for you. So I'm going to also disclose some, let's say, account uh, philosophy which is behind the scenes of this system, just to show you that this is for a small illustration of how to go, how to get together and uh, make, uh, make kind of a group effort. I don't know, in, in the department, we can uh, kind of even a small group, five, six people, but you're sharing everything, and uh, this system enables you to do that. Some uh, also software tools are required to make this group effort um, efficient. And one of that, which I'd like to show you, uh, is, is the, the last one. Which is actually called Watson Studio. Uh, the new brand name is Watson X. I'm going to cover later on why this name has been changed recently. Uh, but anyhow, part of that uh, you can use also out of the cloud. It means that you know, that's clearly not very really clear just only for IBM to have the same software distributed as a as a software, as a product example, but also to, to let that be exported within the cloud. So this is one of those examples of our full data. And uh, really, when you start, uh, when you think about it, like, you know, with a uh, bottom-up approach, sometimes those kind of frameworks are easily seen not to be very uh, useful, since if, if you are alone, if you are two, just two people, maybe you don't need it, but if there is a department of 20 people, this kind of data governance and group effort, uh, but uh, 
done and ordered for any is really important. So that's why I'm showing you here the buttons that are very, very useful. I close them. Developers think this is really not a real mass. But somehow this is the actual very similar effort. I mean, those guys also create something that uh, is uh, required for further stages for the development. So, in, in this sense, uh, I think this, this kind of philosophy coming directly from the software development is worth to uh, at least keep an eye on that. Sometimes, um, Different services are offered across geographies in a, in a different manner. And this is not just on the game specific, because you can see that easily also with other companies. So just be um, very, very cautious that uh, sometimes also the data latency, if you think about deploying something in the cluster, uh, it, it just only changes. Yeah? Yeah. So what I wanted to show you is also that uh, this environment is easily accessible also through uh, in the Indian programming languages through, through the CLI or through the APIs that are used to uh, to make those programs back together. And uh, some of the efforts that actually are here are, are made in a way that you know how they are. Yeah? Or um, a similar ladder. So these are the open source packages, but they can be easily integrated into the framework. So even if you use that other stuff, you can take it, bring it back to this kind of framework and use within the, the framework. There are also some proprietary solutions like IBM mean, decision optimization. And uh, especially I mean I mean historically speaking for the in the C plex optimization. So this kind of things are also easily available through uh, for data and this is also nice offering so um, i think that one of the peculiar things that is worth mentioning here is a, a totally different way how we uh, deal with the data within our game cloud which is different than for example gcp which is google cloud platform um, here we use special libraries and uh, just only you must pay attention that uh, it requires a bit of an effort to understand how it works but definitely if you use those kind of uh, apis later on within the cloud this is just the same credit on, uh, on, on your computer just only this is like on several lines this is somewhere and your data is easily accessible so and this is exactly an example of how compress one another in the GCP, what you do, you just upload the file here. You just use a special library, which is like you know, kind of connector. But later on, uh, this is like you know a virtualized environment that you use for to work with your data. I mean that that's no brainer. This is super similar to the things like you do on your personal computer. But here you can do that also easily with your things within the cloud. And just not paying attention about anything <laughs> like you know, power supply. And Professor Rubin just said something about printing power supply. So that's not the case here because you know, this is replicated, this is available uh, equivalent for the globe. Well, check if the token can be used. Yeah, 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 that's why I know that you are recording that, but you know, this is already <clears throat> that. I mean, this the token is not valid anymore, but you know, good point. Good point. But uh, if this is, I would like to bore you with all the uh, code that's required just to work with the data. I'm just showing, just showing that this is quite different. But it works um, the way how it should work, and also it's very feasible, also from the code perspective, because that's not just a graphical user interface, because everything, uh, you know, IBM is a, uh, if not scientific, then at least engineer company. So it means that everything that I'm showing here, is already prepared to deploy in the code. Not only to play around uh, with the UE, with the graphical mini unity uh, interface, but rather also to deploy in the code. Something that also is very um, comfortable, common, and um, how developers play with, for example, time series, and this time series might be more than here as well, is to be really, you know, uh, make that kind of scanning of dozens of models, not just to be programmed because you know, hyperparallel interspace 
and also the, the model make change on quality. I mean, uh, I may limit the, the possible results to achieve just only by a more selection of the model. So those kind of packages, they are used just to make a, a massive kind of, uh, of, of various models. So it builds our pipelines. Actually, this is short in a, in a kind of a nice graphical way how this is constructed, but anyhow, this is also available within the open source community. Here, it might be leverage not only for uh, like in general, uh, in general uh, modeling, but also for kind of serious. Uh, whether this is effective, this is a little question to assign differently. I mean, what are the limits of uh, this kind of prediction? Like, you know, seconds to seconds better than, for example, traditional forecasting. But this is something clearly related to the, um, the solutions that are uh, already available as a commercial thing. And this is also a kind of a um, discussion that already appeared here. I mean, where is the relation of the mass effort? How this is monetized to, uh, to something that is available to the marketplace. And in this way as well, because you know, some of these models uh, might be available just on as a premium offer. But this is like you know, um, the very old project was saying that you know, maybe 80% uh, of the effort you got with 20% of costs, so you are paying 80% of something which is at the top. Nice. And uh, the other side of the story is also not just only the model but also the point uh, that means that if you think about your job not only just a scientific effort that you need the model you need something to uh, facilitate your code but you want that to, to put it to be open to make it available to the widest audience you need also the infrastructure but also the model how to deploy it this is a kind of, as, a, as I told, told before, and maybe you also the development story, but anyhow, this is also made available to many of the users very, very, in a very, very effective way. You don't have to think about how to deploy, how to, let's say, how to build up the, the servers, the, the story, the infrastructure. Everything here is, is, a, is, is a, as a kind of a pattern. Um, reference is part of IBM, so actually we use reference of virtualization story team virtualization as well. And uh, many of IBM solutions are actually based on this kind of virtualization. So this is available to this is made available to the users. So just uh, log in, define what you need, get your models, deploy, make that available to the wider audience. That's it for that. Yet another um, this is about tokens as well, how to make data private. So basically, since everything in this cloud work depends on the REST API, we need to install special tokens to make a uh, you know, inquiry valid or valid for a certain period of time or just assign a um, special time of, uh, type of um, management rights. So that's also very important to differentiate the, the kind of like cryptography that you get within your system because you have to cryptography and secrecy. That's something of uh, high importance when you talk about deployments, not maybe essentially when you talk about playing ground and creating the solution, but later on. And that's really plays the difference, plays the difference uh, when you talk about how this is deployed. So secret key. Cryptography is more or less, I and mean, in a way, a little bit secure that your key never appears in the system as a, as a key tag. So, never be it, it resides in, in the, your file system, but either it appears as a key tag in, your, in the memory of your system. So, this is something that is, is very peculiar to this kind of offering. I mean, not all the hyperscalers have that. Uh, we have it, and uh, that's a uh, before there was a discussion, I have also a book of professors said uh, about the finance and mathematics. So, especially in finance, this is super important. I mean, that the, the, the secrecy matters and you know, keep eye on the privacy of data is super important. That's why this context is of a very high regularity in this kind of, of businesses, like you know, finance and business. 
So we can talk uh, over dinner, and by the way, the, the logic you see which is behind the scenes, which is called the uh, access, which is uh, the role management, uh, also um, appears here as a as a way of giving the assigning the rights to use the view, some kind of services with the, within the, the solution. So it means that you can create the groups, you can assign them certain privileges, and then you go on and then based on that. Or even you can have uh, some, uh, some services that are not aligned to parts to the users. But this is everything is, is secure and is done in this way based on some certainties. This is a, 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 something what I, I promised before. This is how this is organized in a way, how this, this is measured. So, because at the end of the day, we need a system, we need a counter, whether this is for the electricity, power supply, or computing power, or data stores, that you must pay something. So, this uh, numbers are just some illustration, but anyhow, I'd like to show you that you can have a certain kind of policy, regardless of the size of the. Um, Let's say organization, you or whatever, but you got the budget, you, you just control that, and clearly you can assign certain services for, for a group of services, how to they are deployed. Easy as that, and I think um, 10 years back, maybe 15 years back, when something was talking about cloud, cloud computing and IA, probably that was one of the main drivers uh, that just not only. To, to show it, to make it available to the audience, but also keep an eye on the control of the spending. So that's why those filming systems are really important. And clearly, if you ask me about how it's measured, that depends, yeah? because regularly it depends on, on the type of the services. But there is a kind of inertia that you carry some certain amount of data for defining the service, and they draw some defined chunks of, uh, of, of, of money for a certain portion of the service you use. This is regular, this is uh, not linear, that's clear, uh, and it is cheaper when, when you use more. This is uh, something that I'd like uh, to, to cover just only if you wish to, to if you insist on that, because this is actually how this that's organized. I mean, how it's, it's organized because the, the, the basic philosophy, right, philosophical question is that you, you, if you define a service, and um, a delicate kind of question and the intellectual property of your job is mainly your idea that are written and in, in your articles, maybe in your book, but that's something that's super pro to copy. So if you think about the model that you just deploy your own code in a cloud, who is going to take advantage of, uh, of your own? Because if you use your own computer, you keep the eye on, on the code. Your code is your property. And if you upload it to the, uh, to the cloud, so this is the natural question whether your hyper hypervisor can see that and copy that. Yeah? So this is just the technology that not only is, is based on, the, on like, you know, pure declaration that I don't use, I don't touch your data, but I think I can know. Because this is a cipher, this is does not appear in a clear text. Clearly, I make kind of a reverse engineering, like you know how to make the code and a little bit out of the object model. But that's not the case. I mean, here we have a technology that wraps, uh, based on some cryptography you know, features, um, your code, and it's not available to the higher state, to the to the someone who gives you the service of. Uh, of the cloud, creating the cloud environment. This is one of the technologies that we sell in the end we provide it to the marketplace, and this is uh, a very peculiar. This is IBM old, and as you can see from your perspective, for some of the notions are very familiar. You are very familiar with like, you know, RNN and CNN. So we have some uh, info acceleration and leading the uh, the, the main CPU, so we don't use any kind of asynchronous movement of the data. We can put it on the GPU, but we do that within the, uh, the main core. That's super important when you want to do release of your licensing and you need your uh, inference instantaneously. For example, I see that as well. 
you need something to, to get the results a hundred times faster than it was on the GPU. So just you are going to then take a movement between CPU and GPU. So that's something we learned, we learned the period, uh, last year. Uh, actually, uh, this is even the goal. We have some customers here in Europe using that as well. We think the cloud, this is available as well. So um, quite interesting. And the uh, evolution around that is super fast. We have an IBM close to the New York City um, and artificial intelligence center and probably you got some uh, information about uh, the Davis and Analogous uh, processes that have been uh, created down there on how to use exactly the, mm -hmm. the process that is more natural than uh, the one that we try to just uh, emulate using the um, artificial neural networks. So this is actually on the gene. I mean, this is within the um, electronic and uh, then the construct of, of, of the CPU, how it relates, how it makes the dot product. I mean, because you know, the majority of those operations are all differentiations of those dot products, how this is done with the other, which is always, and like, you know, all that's on my view, faster than, than making a so. Uh, this is something that I promised uh, to, to, to cover, like, you know, this time series motions. And this is a uh, kind uh, of the contest that I created with my partners here in Poland. And uh, it, you know, makes uh, it's a bit of a big deal. We started that for this time. And the first investment was, like, you know, 50 sandwiches. So now we have more budget, we have more partners. Actually, what we do is a trade implementation. This gives you we have guys like you know, students uh, to demonstrate that you know, knowledge doesn't hurt, that if you know more regular, you should get better results. So, without speaking too much about what is the underpinning vision to make it to create it, and actually, I can tell you how to play it. So, um, it's going to be announced to the uh, this year, uh, the fifth time in the world. Although previously we focused on different uh, aspects or different subjects. So the main idea was about the prediction, about forecasting. So clearly, during the times of pandemia and 2020, we were forecasting the, um, the, the level and the parameters of pandemia and all the uh, three basic parameters. Now we moved to, to something which is around finance. And what we need always is a, a model of a market or, or some model that's relatively simple just not to um, make people i mean not create any kind of a uh, barrier just when because you know, not everyone is a well, well educated mathematical financial or uh, let's say trader so we just created that in, uh, in 2022 and 2021 a very, very simple model made just on three, um, let's say, notions. It was like UTV, Bitcoin, and Plus USD. So the idea was just to make some trading effort and uh, just a man, as simple as that. And uh, Professor Nishika said today something about the uh, questions. So I can tell that you know in 2021. And the, the teams coming from Silesia region were very, very you know, excellent. They, what they made, they just won the competition, but based on their backward engineers. So that they, you know, this is like with the title of my speech, I think they achieved that. They, they achieved that. You know, but we created a that much better solution last year. And last year, the, the results were super realistic. You know, they were able to have more than 2% over the course of 520 hours. So, uh, and this is also about uh, time series in a sense that people want to see what the, the new, uh, brand new tooling used also for, like, you know, analyzing the work with the temporal data, what it gives to, to particularly speaking, time series. Clearly, time series is somehow similar to NLP, but not that. Not, it's not the same because uh, natural language processing is also temporal data. 
but uh, the difference is that you know you see more labs on the data at the same time. And I see that that's totally opposite. So this is one of the examples that seems to be super simple because that's something that you know creates a kind of a relation over the the elements over one aspect. Yeah? But you no, know, that was invented just on ten years back. How to make some calculation based on language modeled as a uh, as numbers. So this is a kind of a general which is within the, uh, the, the language that was discovered in 2013. From the very beginning, Google search was you know by mathematicians who were not part of the Google at the end of the 90s and was claimed to be very simple, like you know, the products of facade, but you know, all the something is something that if we don't know what is this something. You cannot really understand what it comes from. So, uh, the NLP, um, as part of uh, machine learning, is, uh, it is super active and super hot. Clearly, somehow it resembles the way how we might work with time series. And this is also a lot for those guys who are taking part in the competition because competition is very simple. You must predict something, regardless of the methods you use. This year, we are going to, uh, to make also APIs available to the guys. Because last year and two years back, we just offered them graphical user interface. This year, if someone wants to make really a high performance training, it's a lot. It's a lot to use any kind of techniques related to type series. And uh, clearly, the, the, maybe the second breakthrough after this algebra, which is you know, popped out as a part of the data, language processing, was uh, where transforms. Uh, and uh, the creation of transformers, how to avoid the sequential analyzing of data that takes time and takes resources and to make it at once and, 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 and too much. Okay? So, this is also more or less than the being construct of all the stuff that you know, several learn, bunch of learning like GPT. So, the, the backbone of that in our transformers, this is like my you know, second breakthrough after this, this meeting of job. So, um, and this is also actually available within this uh, IBM uh, cloud system as well. That's why I told you before that uh, cloud talk for data this is the same. A traditional name, actually, this is also next. The value for also next is very you know, important to the businesses that, um, unlike GPT, which is super interesting and you know, changed a lot. Yeah? So, the data, which is which underpins this kind of models is curated. It's something that uh, has been prepared just for business use. So it tries to avoid any kind of hallucinations. It doesn't create you know, GPT. The strength is that you know, it seems to be pure. It's not because you know, this is statistics only, but it seems to be pure. So you can just also play around with that, with the prompting, how to make it uh, better. Uh, Due to, to the results you are expected. And, and uh, this is available also within the IBM cloud ecosystem. And this is, uh, this is a kind of a bad proposal that I'd like to, to make to all of you because what I need is a team composed of three persons right, for this year addition because clearly uh, we qualify for the final just only top 20 teams uh, across the globe who took part in the first round. But nevertheless, I also have some fake teams. So just not, not to let the people know uh, what's their relative position at the end of this final round. So even if they think that they were, they were, they were free, free, it resulted they, they were first because I had two fake teams. So I just propose you could create one fake team. We start in November. I have all, already some goodies for you, so free volunteers. We are going to, to cover your names. We, we can just you know name the team based them or whatever because you know the names are super different and there is no uh, I would like to, to tell you what's the, the imagination and what are the thoughts of the young guys, but not really very clear. Anyhow, uh, if you wish we start it in November, you can use water baby, you know, any kind of coding, even one room. The result is just only one. We are going to, to assess you only on what you got, on how many, um, 120 hours of the run. So 
This is more or less a sense of the time series that I, I mentioned when reading the fact of the stall. So, if you have any question, I give just follow my thanks for inviting me for, for this session and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Questions, please. He asked a question about uh, actually accelerating host device transfer, which you mentioned is one of the obstacles, especially as GPUs become more and more powerful. Um, as far as NVIDIA technology is concerned, I'm aware that they are used like NVIDIA links, so that basically allow graphical units to communicate between each other. So this is uh, like an NVIDIA group that is well. Be, besides that, could you reveal like what kind of plans and tricks could you apply to speed up this uh, device host transfer? That, that's a very good question because it also uh, resembles the kind of application that we used to have in the IBM. Uh, we also have uh, the super um, fast handling connections to, to GPUs. Um, the, the scenario that I was just showing you here is that even the IBM Cloud, we are using the different cloud, also coming from NVIDIA. So what the difference between the on-chip acceleration or on-chip, uh, let's say the lithography, which is just to support, uh, is clearly the, the power of that. GPU, in the sense of, of teraflops, is bigger than what we have on the chip. So I um, cannot refer directly on how to organize the topology between the GPUs themselves, because this is NVIDIA for We can say that just for certain context, predominantly in the financial institutions like you know, uh, preventing the money laundering. So anomaly detection in a stream, that's enough. I mean, this number of terraforms you have on the is enough, but no, that's not the same. So probably, if you think about how to process the data, like, you know, transferring or, uh, well, computer vision, if not, uh, like, you know, abandoned to like, uh, what Professor Moussa Marichal before, you know, uh, the frontier for the processing is different. So that, in this sense, I cannot refer directly to the NVIDIA topology. I can say just on that we have a different uh, portfolio, different offering, but if they made it available to any other customers, we have it in the Okay, was a very specific question. Any other questions? Because I, so I have a question, I have a suggestion. So, so I know we have at least a couple of groups working on the so time series link analysis, and I suggest we have an internal meeting. With, uh, our friends from IBM, sometimes really, just to explore the possibilities. Um, that's the first thing. So, so those are the more sense. So whoever wants to like to join us, uh, please do please. So. Um, I have another question. So, for the first, you mentioned the, the IBM Cloud is a, is a computational algorithm, but that's not what we are using actually quite extensively. But particularly, the like, IBM Cloud, we are actually using Google services. Because at the moment, the, the other resources are that like few kind of ways to spend our data in our premium well. There is a trend in the industry to provide an you know, essential computation of the use of academia. Now, you mentioned a lot about the possibility. Do you have also computational advance uh, from which uh, you know, the, the, the researchers who are in need of some more heavy lifting that we can do on the platforms? Um, I think that the question is basically uh, about how to compare the, how the you own with something that you use in the data. So, so, so my question is, is, is suppose that I'm sitting on the institution and I don't have a lot of time, but I have a lot of computations to do. Mm -hmm. Can I ask IBM for a support? I like one page of research proposal and get that's, that's an easy stuff. I mean, clearly, this is something that I'm doing. It gives you some context to, to 
friends of mine, who just were just fighting the car, because I particularly in the end evolved to something different. And definitely that's one of the way how they approach and they work also with the summer and people on the club. So I think that for all my students that we, we do some basic stuff around fashion and but also in the relations and series or uh, NLP and you, we use those stuff, this stuff. And, and the main effort, I mean, the main reason for that is, is group effort. Because we can just share the results, we can just continue. And that's the reason why we do the stuff. Yeah, yeah, we are to them. The reality of all the idea of infrastructure is that actually it's not going to be the iron trunk, but nobody has access to the people who have the people who have the people who have the Any further questions? I think we have room for one or two questions. Oh, Jazzy, you have all the teachers today, but I'm going to this as well, so I'll try to follow. Yeah. I have a cookie, so we can make it. So if you take the cookies, you must take the bottom. Okay, interesting. We'll consider it. Let's take this. Yeah. Yeah.